Very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another ULaw Practice webinar. And uh, today's topic that we're going to be covering is about the analytics and insight, about how both legal analytics and insights bring clarity um, and a bit of a sanity, to be quite honest, to your legal practice. These are the types of data that you may or may not already know, may not be the right questions that you're asking about how your firm can improve um, both financially as well as the target that you have and the goals that you've set yourself for growth um, and for outreach. So we're going to be covering in today's topic about how important it is to be able to analyze your firm's both financial, business, legal accounting aspects of the business, and as well as other aspects of the business, right, from marketing um, to, uh, I think, from soup to nuts, uh, right across the range. And we're going to be covering about how ULaw does it in a very subtle and in a very subliminal way by able to capturing data as you enter across the ULaw software throughout the use of the product and the types of reports and analysis that we provide at the end of the day for you to be able to capture this data but also analyze this data on a regular period of time to improve your practice. I want to make sure that you understand that today's webinar is not accredited for CPD, uh, but it's going to be about a 30 to 45 minute fun-filled session where we, if you're a current ULaw webinar, a ULaw user, you're certainly going to appreciate some of the features and functionalities that we cover. So going to the agenda, as we always have an agenda within the ULaw webinars, how do you bring a 360 view of your business? You know, what are the types of questions that you need to ask? How does ULA present that data to you today? We're going to be talking about you analyze the unknown. So if you do not know the right questions to ask, are you missing out on the opportunity? How do you analyze those types of data? We're going to give you a few examples of those along the way. How do you account for and analyze accounting data? At the end of the day, you are a business owner, whether it's a solo or a small law firm, um, it is certainly a business for profit. And it's really important that you analyze your accounting data, whether it's trust or general, from both a compliance perspective, but also from a business hygiene perspective. Am I being profitable? Where are my expenses going every month, every quarter? Where should I be better? at uh, expensing my clients. Uh, those are the types of data that you probably want to analyze. How much of trust money do I still left, do I still have left that I could actually transfer over to make my money? So those are really critical questions that you want to ask your firm almost every day. And how does ULaw present that data in a very easy format for you to be able to retrieve that data? Getting insight into your client's trust in general. So, uh, you know, whether it's your client asking you that question, or whether it's you looking to get your retainer dollars stopped up, these are really important questions that you probably won't get, want to ask every day. And the analytics, the, the insights that you get out of um, these tools allows you to prepare yourself for the next day and how you can better run your firm. And the bottom line is, all this data, if you were to do it on a manual basis or if you were to do it any other software basis, um, big law firms, as we've stated, do spend th hundreds and thousands of dollars to have business an analysts sitting, crunching this data on a daily basis to be able to provide that high-level report that senior personnel in that firm traditionally look at to draft the future of the firm. Those are the types of data and reports and dashboards that we're able to give you without that extra cost right within the ULaw platform. So when we talk about matter analytics, there's two fundamental reasons why we think analytics are important for any legal firm. To begin with, you being either a sole practitioner, small, medium-sized law firm, don't necessarily have all the resources required to be able to crunch these types of data on a daily basis. So, and we certainly understand that, and we understand that pain point. And to facilitate that, 
EULA, in a very natural way, comes along with an analytics engine that's inbuilt into the product. So for that EULA subscription that you pay every month, the EULA features and the insights come along with it. So there's no extra charge. There's no extra module. It's just part of the equation. And we would love for you to maximize that feature for the purposes and benefits of your firm. So understanding your practices, past success and failures from a numbers perspective really allows us to give you that insight and that dashboard view about how you can perform and better your previous year, the next year going forward. It gives you that data, it gives you that knowledge as we say, and makes you feel like a big law firm. The other aspect to it obviously is our analytics really helps you understand the state of your practice to see what corrective actions that you could take, again, to improve the hygiene of your business. Are there pending and aging invoices? Who are the top clients that haven't paid you and how long have they not paid you? So are those corrective measures that you need to take? Who are the clients or top paying clients who pay you right on time? We wanna make sure that you take best care of those clients, ensuring their success and satisfaction. Many times our clients do the work, take the retainer, do the work, but fail to transfer money from trust to general. Sometimes as part of our life, we tend to forget these things, but again, as a legal practitioner, you being able to move that money from trust to general is what's gonna allow you to make your money for your firm. So having a quick dashboard that gives you a 360 view of all the matters in your in your life that are active that have pending trust transfers instantaneously gives you that money in your bank. And when we talk about the questions that we don't necessarily ask ourselves in a legal practice, here are some of the questions that we felt that not necessarily all legal firms ask themselves. Uh, some of these questions may not even be, um, again, what we know the unknowns are the unknowns. So how much money was received in trust? These are really good questions to ask. How many withdrawals were made in that trust? What is the trust balance? And I'm sure you ask what is the trust balance at all times. It's also part of that law society reports that you generate. How much of a trust transfer was done for invoicing? And how much of that trust paid was for disbursements? I mean, these are really critical questions that really determines the hygiene and the sanity of those matter and hence the overall practice. Continuing along some of the other questions that we feel are very interesting. Is there money in trust that is yet to be paid? How much of that service has been invoiced? I mean, that's a really important question too, to know what was planned and what's actuals. And if you're getting partial payments, and if that's how you written your retainer agreement, if you're getting partial payments from a client on an interim bills, then you probably want to understand how much of the overall invoice has been paid, and has it been paid in full or is it partial? And trying to understand where does your revenue come from in general? Is it client payments or is it trust giving you a better balance for whether you should consider having a trust account? And, you know, always a good question is when should I call the client to request for a top up in my trust funds? All right? So these are really nice questions and very interesting questions that and there are many more, but this is just a good review and a sample the type of questions that you probably should ask yourself, but also the types of questions that you law answers right away through the software. And why do we need to answer these questions? Why do we even need these questions, right? By answering these complex questions, your legal firm or law office can increase your productivity and overall revenue. See, those are the top two goals. And when we did a recent research with our existing clients, but also the research that has been done by legal research firms, those are the top two aspects that solo practitioners and small law firms want to improve on. They want to be more productive, so better back for the buck, and increase their revenue or top line. And by being productive, they're obviously going to cut the overall cost of running a business and hence that's going to add into your revenue and your profitability right away. 
So coming to the question of why EULA, what is EULA insight? And as I mentioned earlier on, the insight is a part and parcel of our EULA suite. It's not an additional module. It's just a feature that is full-fledged. It comes along with the entire suite, the solution that you get with your subscription. And what does it do? It, it provides you that instant insight to not only data, but knowledge about what that data means, both in terms of numbers, but also in terms of simple English statements. I'm going to take maybe 10, 15 minutes to kind of give you an overall view of the types of reports, analytic dashboards, and insights that are all plugged in into ULaw every step of the way after this presentation. But it's really important to understand that our insights are meant to ensure that you as a legal practitioner have a very good understanding and a very new perspective of your own data, a very more holistic view of your own data. After all, this is your matter, this is your client, this is your bookkeeping of your practice, but we are able to give you that new perspective of how you should look at that data and what you should conceive in digesting that data. So we not only analyze your accounting books, but we also analyze your clients, your matters, and the accounting data in a very holistic way. We're gonna look at some of the examples of types of reports and dashboards and analytics in a quick snapshot going forward that kind of give you an overall holistic view of the hygiene of your practice and your business. But how are these insights visualized? So right from tabular data, to give you a quick view of the individuals involved, to a pie chart, to a bar graph, sometimes it's easier to review certain types of data and analytics in various formats, to what's, I think, a very unique aspect of ULaw to provide it to you in kind of a Q&A format, in English, in simple English. We're gonna cover how we do that across all these three silos of your legal accounting software. And, and why is it a game changer, right? It, it, it's a game changer because these very important business intelligent reports or dashboards provide your legal practice the power of a large firm. And what is the power that the large firm has? It almost has the capability to predict the future because you're gonna be able to do that based on past data. By using past data, you, you wanna talk about a little bit more about predictive analytics. So if I've done, you know, 80% of my business has come from criminal offense and a good 60% of that criminal came from the marketing dollars that I spent in a certain region. Then it only gives you that, it gives you that insight and that empowerment to know that if I were to spend a little bit more on the marketing dollars in the same area, then I should expect slightly larger revenue. Or if I want to diversify my portfolio, you probably want to look at where should I be spending my marketing dollars as a legal firm, or what should I be doing to really diversify my portfolio and not just depend on criminal offense? All right. So those are the types of things that large law firms look at uh, as they start working towards their profitability. What would cost a large company, as I said, huge dollars, is provided to you at a fraction of the cost, all with that subscription cost of EULA. And the fact that this is available to you on uh, any mobile device, any device that's connected to the internet. We have EULA apps, both on iOS and, and Android, and at any time, you click the analytics um, and view insights and data across contacts, matters, and accounts at any time. The power of having that right within the palm of your hands. And kind of to top it up, we're not only giving you an easy and a quick way to answer the questions that you knew, but we're also kind of giving you a new perspective of the answers so that some of the questions that you probably didn't know to ask. Okay, so a good example would be how much of my trust comes from disbursements? How much of my trust is actually being paid through disbursements? So it's a good question to ask, but not many people ask that question. 
And it's a good hygiene check if it's a good discipline for you to know that you're managing your trust funds and you ensure that part of the retainer, you're going to take the disbursements as part of it. And if that's working for you and that's what you see as part of the data that's coming out of your law, that's maybe something that you want to continue using down the path. Or if many times you pay that disbursement out of your general account and you're finding that those are uh, disbursements that your clients would have to pay for you and you're noticing that your clients don't necessarily pay you on time, but then you're maybe paying charges to a credit card that you actually put on these general disbursements, then those are the types of questions you want to ask, whether you should switch to maybe a trust disbursement or is it really worth those aeroplan points to put it on a general disbursement, okay? And this is just a quick snapshot of the types of data and reporting and dashboarding right within new law that gives you the answers to some of the many questions, the complex questions that we spoke about a couple of slides before. We call it source of contact, but it can also be the lead source. It's a quick and easy report that tells you where you're getting most of your clients. It's a part of the client intake form that we ask you the question, which invariably would be the question that you, you ask your client, how did you hear about us, right? Being able to capture that right within that intake form allows us to crunch the data behind the scene and give you a simplistic report that you can then use to make those decisions. C book, how much am I, what's my revenue? Expense book, though the law society does ask for fee book as part of your compliance checklist, the expense book is not something that they really worry about. The expense book is for you to manage and ensure that your general expenses, your business expenses are taken care of. We combine fee and expense books to give you a profit and loss as, as well as um, the reports that are acquired for your business. Invoice balance is a great example of a report or a dashboard in new law that gives you a quick snapshot of those faulty customers that have not paid you as well as the trust, pending trust transfers that you can move to general to make your money. Pro bono. We know a lot of our legal professionals are good Samaritans and they do the occasional pro bono dockets. But if you've ever wondered how much of pro bono have you been doing every quarter and whether that's increasing or decreasing, then we have a quick snapshot for you to give that report right away. And how do we do that? As part of your docketing and part of your mattering, we allow you to capture that data right there so you don't have to worry about it at a later time. If you want to look at a quick view of how your estimated bills versus your actuals are billed, then we have a report for that as well. If you want to have a better understanding of the areas of practice that you're getting your most revenue. That's not only a report, but that's a full-fledged dashboard in itself as part of our analytics suite. So not only do we provide you contact level analytics, matter level analytics, but business and legal accounting level of analytics is the power of ULA. A few more examples are what are your unbilled hours by matter, gender ledgers, trust ledgers, an aging report. An aging report gives you, again, a very new perspective to the same question of who owes you money. The aging report gives you a view of who owes you how much money, but for how long? Have they owed it to you for about 60 days of sale? Maybe your terms was to be a net 30, but if the individual has been paying you over 30 days, then it's something, a bit of a soul search. Do you want to continue working with that company? Or if you find that it's a trend across an area of practice, then the soul searching is, do you want to focus on that area of practice? So the data that you capture on a day-to-day -day basis can at the end of the day, provide you with some deep insights that then govern the direction that you want to take moving forward for your legal firm. And obviously, you want to know who's your top paying client, and that's just a breeze in your law. And that's why with your law practices matter analytics, you certainly have the power of a big law firm. I'm going to now shift gears um, as, again, to those who are new to ulawpractice.com, we're a legal 
accounting and practice management software. We're Canadian, based in Ottawa, and our data is very much here in Canada. And we do offer, as part of our practice, a 30-day no-obligation free trial. And we welcome you to visit us at ulawpractice.com and sign up for that free 30-day trial. So let me shift gears right now and actually get into ULaw. So this is a dashboard view. And let me quickly annotate to keep it simpler. So this, I'm logged in into our one of our Playground accounts. And whether it's your Playground or your own account, this is what you're going to be um, seeing as part of your landing page, if that's the dashboard. One of the analytics that you could see right away is the invoice spending matter. I don't want to even have to get into reports yet. This is a quick snapshot of, obviously, this is a demo database. But these are all the matters for which you've done the work and you've failed to raise an invoice. Okay, so it's a quick analytics of the top pending matters that need to be invoiced. And being able to run through that matter and being able to invoice that matter reminds you to take that off the checklist, and it does it automatically. But let's focus on some of the reporting capabilities before we jump into the actual analytics. At a contact level, we spoke about the different levels of insights and data, sort of contact matter as an account and an overall business view. So within the contact level, um, let me look at an example. Let me search for the most recent matters that I may have dealt with. So I'm going to be looking for maybe Tom Rodney. Just a quick search within ULaw, just like Google. I'm going to choose Tom Rodney. So at any time, this is just, again, a fake account. You want to look at the matters associated with Tom Rodney. But interestingly enough, you do see this question mark. So if you had no idea as to who this is, or maybe there's a new um, assistant who's just joined your law firm, and they have no clue about this file or Tom as an individual, and maybe he's on the line, this is a quick way for them to get a quick insight into Tom Rodney, right? If you were to just click ULaw Insight, it tells you right away that the client owes you 21,600. It's, it's, it's on the face and it's just really there and you can move on to the next, how much has been invoiced, 22,600. How much has been paid? That's the total amount paid so far by Mr. Tom Rodney, the thousand dollars. What's the total invoice balance? That's the total amount of pending invoice balances for Mr. Tom. And was there any amount received through trust? Yes, $1,000 was received through a trust transfer, and that was received into the funds of the retainer. And that was, you know, we even track who paid for Tom Rodney. So if someone else paid for Tom Rodney, you know that as well. And is there any money left in trust? No, you seem to have moved it again. How many matters have been created for Tom Rodney so far? One. And you can pause the running as well. So those are the top 10 questions that we've answered right away. It kind of gives you that insight right away by just clicking that question mark against a contact. Now, if you want to have a further Q&A, so going back to my presentation where I spoke about our formats being in a Q&A format, if I were to just click on the details panel, this has a quick and easy Q&A format for about 11 questions for which we answer the question right away. We ask the question, and we also provide you the answer. So what is the total amount owed by Mr. Tom Rodney? It's 21600 What is the total amount invoiced? That's the amount. What is the total amount paid so far? So you kind of get the gist. Not how only have we taken those numbers, those accounting numbers, but we've converted them into meaningful questions and provided you with the answers as well with those numbers inbuilt. So 
all we did was actually create a matter for Tom Rodney and dock at the time. If you look at his matter, that's essentially what's happened. Okay, so if you look at Tom Rodney's matter right away, essentially what's happened is that we've gotten that thousand dollar retainer, and there is that flat fee of a contingency of twenty thousand dollars, and we've actually raised an invoice. Here are little insights that we provide right away by clicking on that no invoice is pending we tell you the list of all the invoices that you raised so that's an important question right how many invoices have been raised for this matter so it looks like at this time there is just that one matter and if you want to know further information about you know that particular matters analytics as the name sounds you click on the question mark so the question mark is really the analytics button, if you will, across EULA besides the analytics suite by itself. So by clicking the question mark now within the matters panel, we get a, a totally new set of questions and perspectives. So the total invoice raised, we give you the opportunity to reprint it, but the deposit and trust was a thousand dollars. It was withdrawn from trust and when was it withdrawn or fully withdrawn it was deposited on the first it was withdrawn on the first itself if you want to have a better ledger understanding of that you got that retainer from tom rodney that was the check he provided you for this particular matter tr 4202875 file number it was a thousand dollar receipt and obviously this was for demo purposes but then that was transferred as part of a trust transfer for that first invoice, invoice number 2387 that was raised. And hence, it's kind of a balanced uh, trust ledger, if you will. Moving along, we have now the general ledger. An invoice was raised for $22,600. $1,000 was paid because of the $1,000 that was moved from trust to general. And what's the outstanding balance that's remaining? 21600 when was it invoiced? On the 1st. And you can see right away the invoice is due or has been unpaid for the past three days. So if this were to say 45 or 31 even, and if it's just above your net, you know that you have to give this individual a call. If you want to have a deeper understanding of the ledger, you're going to see that legal fee invoice of 22600 for further insight beyond this very high level quick insight to the analytics of this particular matter if you wanted a deeper dive you just click on the U law insight button and very similar to the analytics that we saw for the contact for Tom Rodney this is the analytics for the particular matter for Tom Rodney Okay, and each matter can have its own analytics, but they all summarize to Sir Tom Rodney's case, right? At this time, we would be having this individual to the matter. So the matter invoice status is that it is invoiced. Again, we know that it's number one. Total invoice paid, and if I were to go back to those 11 questions, what you have now are 27 questions, okay? So we've kind of given you a further breakdown beyond what the contact analytics gives you. So for example, what is the number of days since the invoice was raised? Three days, okay? Let's look at an interesting question here. What is the number of days since the last trust deposit was made? Three days. What is the total amount of client owing for this matter? 21,600 and what's this amount received as a settlement for this matter that's a really important question so maybe if you receive it as a settlement you know what that amount is so those are the types of deep dive analytics we even tell you what is the total number of dockets that you put in for this matter so if I were to go back I look at one two three and four those are the four dockets that you put in into this particular matter. 
or are there any billable time? As you can see, there's no billable time. There's just a flat rate. It tells you what is the number of flat rate dockets, three. Total number of time dockets, if there's one, there's one. Okay. And for some reason, if there's no activity on this particular matter, it tells you even that. So that's truly the significant power of ULaw by providing you that deep dive analytics. And all that our legal professionals do by when they use um, ULaw is create a contact, create a matter, generate law society compliance documents, docket time, docket their retainers, um, save all their documents right within one area by integrating with Google Drive, add additional parties and generate documents that are pre-filled as we do have a court form automation. But that's just part and parcel of their day-to-day -day task of using ULaw. But what happens behind the scenes is what ULaw brings to the picture. And that's the value that we as a product bring. So when you created that contact, you got this particular insight right away. If you wanted to generate a quick fee book report, you can always do that. It allows you to generate a report perspective of the same information that you can hand over to an individual or an auditor or your bookkeeper or accountant. So that's really a quick fee book from Sir Tom Rodney, right? But if you needed the deep analytics, please do click on the question mark, whether it's in their contacts or matters. What other types of reports can I generate for Tom Rodney? Right? I could do the client fee book. But overall, for my contacts, I have the source of contact report. So for this entire quarter, let's say you sit down and it's a Sunday morning and you really want to understand how do I bring more clients in? So again, as I said earlier on, to do the future, you want to understand the present and its past. So for this quarter, Give me a quick snapshot report of where my clients are coming from. Again, please do pardon that this is uh, a demo database. So if I were to do it for maybe the monthly, the daily. And again, if there were no reports coming in for that particular day, then you probably won't see it. There you go. But then the source of contact is a tremendous report that gives you the view, and you can generate a PDF or an Excel. Okay. Moving along to the quick view. Again, it's a quick view of all the matters that exist in your file, whether it's active, closed, or archived. And we give you the opportunity to print it, because if you want a quick look of all the active matters, you can print that right away or you can only print the work in progress, let's say for this entire week. Or I would go one step further and do it for the month. Now the work in progress or the WIP report as they often talk about, gives you a really new perspective of all the matters that are still in progress. And it tells you the unbuilt hours and if there's any flat fee, and most importantly, when was that last activity? and what was the client's name, and if there were multiple matters for the same client, it would note that too. But in this case, there is one matter against each of the client. So the work in progress report is, again, a very, very essential and important report. Now that we've looked at some of the deep tab analytics by clicking the question mark, we're going to be talking about some of the reports that provide you the deeper dive insight and analytics before we finally wrap it up with the analytics suite. So when you look at the reports, as you know, all the reports are under the document generation tab with the new law. And as the classification stands, reports, you have a timeline view of every matter, okay? So I don't know if you've looked at this before, but this tells you in a timeline fashion about each and every step that's happened in this particular matter. Okay, so the total lifetime has been for 72 hours. The last edited was 72 hours back. On the 1st of November, a retainer was received in that check number at about 12 o'clock. 
on the same day, an invoice was generated. A contingency fee was added. Docket. Right. The client meeting, first client meeting, second client meeting, the contingency fee, and a little travel mileage disbursement was added as well. So all within the reports, so you have the timeline of the particular matter. You could also have the timeline for the accounting touch points that have happened in that matter. Okay, so here's that trust deposit by the check amount. The first legal fee that went out. The trust withdrawal that happened. And the trust transfer that happened between trust to general. So you also get a very, very neat timeline view of both your matter as well as your accounts. You could print timesheets. You can print legal aid reports right from ULaw. And these also provide the data and the insights and the analytics about the type of work that you've done. Moving along from contacts to matters to accounts. The accounts tab is where you're going to see within ULaw talk about both legal accounting reports as well as business accounting reports. So legal accounting reports could be the ledger. So you could have generated the ledger right within the matter. If I were to just go a step back real quick, if I click on the question mark again, and if I needed the trust ledger for this particular matter, I would click on the ledger button and it gives you a quick view of the ledger. But if I wanted a particular matters or a client's ledger or or a period of duration of time as the law society would ask you to provide, then we have that under our accounts, under our ledgers, clients trust. And I can even choose Mr. Tom Rodney as an example and generate a trust ledger just for Tom Rodney. Okay, and that's a very powerful feature because Yes, the Law Society would like you to provide it for all clients, but individually, if you were to look at it, and again, mind you, these are reports and really insights into your ledger, but it's all within the compliance and the Law Society's um, format that's mentioned in the bookkeeping guidelines. It captures all of the data and gives you a clear view of what's happened within that trust ledger. You receive that retainer, $1,000, through a check on that particular date, and then you do the trust transfer as part of that invoice legal fee. And the invoice number was 2387 for this particular matter, 420287. So you have all of the information right away with the date stamp as to when this was printed and why the balance is zero. Okay? Moving along with the reports within the accounting um, menu item within you law under ledger you have your clients general we also provide you with the clients trust and general journals balances if you were to generate let's say a better view of your overall revenue let's say I want to understand my revenue for this quarter I can download a report makes it a easier for you to read or print or alternatively, you could generate quarterly and do a ULA insight. And this as the other two insights that you saw for contact and matters. So anywhere you see a question mark or a ULA insight specifically, you're going to have this rectangular box and you're going to have that high level information that you need. So that's the total amount of income that you received for this quarter. That's the highest revenue. We even tell you from who you received that. It was for accident benefits. So it tells you the category. This is the second highest revenue for a criminal in Mississauga category. That was the third highest revenue for POA for that quarter. Fourth, fifth. And you got it right. The Q&A. The Q&A talks about the top six questions that this particular statement answers. 
what is the total income, what category has the highest, and the top five categories. Okay? Likewise, you can look at your expense report for that quarter. A quick insight would give you top total expense for that quarter. You can always pause it, otherwise we're just running it. Total amount of expense. What was the highest expense? If you want to ask that question, what was the highest expense in which category? Second highest expense. Same concept, kind of gives you a Q&A in, in English. And that's how easy we've made providing you the data and insight on the data that you've already captured. So if you wanted a quick profit and view, there you go, one snapshot. We tell you for that quarter, you are a profitable business. And that's the amount of profit you made so far. Total profit, loss, net income, the income statement, the expense statement, and the highest revenue. Again, going back, we obviously now have 14 questions because it not only covers the revenue, but also adds in the expenses as well. So if you noticed, whether it's the contacts going to that question mark or generating the reports, whether it's the matter looking at the question mark and the insight, or whether it's generating the reports, or it's the same concept from an accounting perspective, looking at, there's obviously no question mark in accounting, but all the insights are within the document generation, and for each category of the report, we have a deeper dive into that particular category. And a very important insight is about who owes you money. And we spoke about that pro bono report. As you capture pro bonos with the new law, we give you the power of being able to give you those analytics in that report to tell you that in this quarter, where have you spent and how much have you spent of your pro bono? So for this quarter, from 1st of October to the 1st of Jan, we tell you all the clients. We give you a summary. Who is the top client for whom you paid the most pro bono? Imagine having to calculate all of this, you know, in another system or have when you have multiple systems to kind of capture this kind of data. Or if you were to do this manually, then it gets a lot more laborious. And again, it gives you a good pie view of where you spend most of your pro bono. And it also summarizes the amount that you've spent for this quarter. So it tells you it's about 14 hours that you've spent of pro bono hours. And that's how a good Samaritan you've been for this quarter. And you can do that for monthly, weekly, yearly, at uh, whatever time period you like. The fee book, the expense book, again, those are downloadable as reports if you like them, or if you like to have a quick insight, it's going to give you the same information and the Q&A format that you're now accustomed to, giving you deeper dive expenses into your fee books. And the other very important report, other than the pro bono, which is under other, is the invoice balance. As I mentioned in my presentation earlier on, this is one of the most commonly used reports in ULA that gives our legal friends the power of knowing which client of theirs owes them money. And this is a report that you probably want to generate every week just to give you, just to be on top of your accounts receivable. And we give you insights too. Who is the client with the oldest unpaid invoice? You don't have to search for it. We tell you right away. John Gill owes you that money, and he's been owing to you for quite a bit. Who is the client who has the highest balance? So we tell you Mr. Simon Garfield owes you almost $22,000, and again, for a bit of time. Then this is you having to move that money. So for Mr. Simon Garfield, that's the amount of money that's sitting in trust. And if I were to come down, um, 
and search for Mr. Simon. That is exactly what the report tells you too. And what this report tells you are these four important category columns. What is the actual balance? What is the trust balance, if there is any? And most importantly, what is the pending trust transfer? This one particular column pretty much tells you that the ball is in your court. So this money of 638 is actually sitting in your trust and you failed to move the money. And this fourth is really what tells you the actual amount the guy owes you over and about trust. So if you were to look at Mr. Simon Garfield, you're going to notice 221075 is setting in pending trust transfer. So if you were to go back, go into my contacts, You're going to do this first, right? You're going to take that $22,000. You're going to go to Simon Garfield, go to his matter, click on the question mark because you want that insight. We give you the opportunity to move that money from trust to general right here. You click on the transfer. You click on those eligible in fees. It only transfers the legal amount. So. What I'm trying to showcase here is based on the insight, you're actually able to make an action. You're able to take an action. So let's say we're the, a check transfer from your trust to general. That's your money now. If I were to go back to that same report and generate an invoice balance report as of today's date, you're going to notice that Mr. Simon Garfield would not be in that list anymore. Okay? So that's how important it is to have those types of data available to you and the reports that are available to you. So we summarize and we basically tell you about $53,000 is sitting in trust money that could be yours today. So when I regenerate that report, now having moved that Simon Garfield, you don't see Simon Garfield anymore. If I were actually go into Mr. Simon's report, I would not even see him in this list because he owes you no money. And if you were to come back and look at the summary of what's sitting left in trust, it's exactly the 22,000 that's missing from the previous report. So the invoice balance is, is a very nice way to give you the insight about who owes you money. But let's go one step further and we, let's look at an aging report that gives you, as I said, a different perspective of that same report. This gives you an insight so this tells you who owes you money for how long. So here's that Mr. Tom Rodney Rogers. He has 21600 That is not in trust, but that's client pending. So he owes you that money. So that tells you that you better call this guy and get your money. But it doesn't tell you whether it's the right time to call this individual. Because maybe it's a net 30, and it's only been three days since you did that matter, so it would not be advisable or would not be a good practice to call him before that net 30 because you don't want to piss him off. So that's why you want to have an aging report that gives you a different perspective. And what is this saying? What is the balance that's owed of this particular date? So if you look at John Gill, he owes you this money for the last six months. Or in fact, he owes you for longer than six months. But this report just looks at the last six months. And if I were to come down and quickly look at Mr. Tom Rodney. He doesn't owe you that money from April, May, June, July, or August. He owes that money as of now, as of November. We've got April, July, August, September, October, November. So he owes you that money only now. Only when this bucket moves into this bucket that he owes you for two months, maybe it's a good time to call him. And we also give you a little snapshot of what this report really entails. Okay, so that's the power of reports and data and insights that EULA provides. The same data, but it has two different perspectives to it and gives you two different actionable items. Okay, so this one allows you to move your trust money into general. This gives you a perspective of when to call the individual. Uh, for a client payment. 
last but not the least, or before that even, if you want to generate a timesheet, if you want to understand who within your law firm or your legal firm has put in a lot of work, you've got a timesheet, you've got a client summary, you can even combine your client and service summary and do it for the month or quarterly. It gives you a different perspective. And now we've tried to take and combine all of this into this one simple analytics dashboard. I think with that, I will wrap up today's webinar. What the analytics dashboard is, is a quick and easy way for you to choose. So let's say a Sunday afternoon, you just want to know, all right, who are my top paying clients? And I want to know it for this entire year, because let's say I want to send them a gift. So for the entire year, I'm going to be looking for fee book chart by client. In the meantime, let me show you the report that we just generated from the calendar. And this report really tells you what was the estimated hour and the billable hours. So for Adam Frontenac, you estimated two hours, but then you build in three. For Mr. Jack, you actually estimated eight hours, but you've actually built them about 30 minutes but more. So it kind of gives you a different insight into how you estimate time for a particular legal work and the type of billability that actually happens to, and this is broken down by individual. It tells you, were there any non-billable hours for that period? What was the total estimated time? And what was the total billable? Because these are, again, very powerful insights into who you are. So this is the fee book, or rather the insight on who are your top clients. As you can see, Mr. Simon Garfield, with that 22,910, was your top client for the year. So if you want to look at it as a pie chart, you could do that. You can do it as tabler. You can sort it, ascending, descending. So you can look at it. You can look at it on the quarter basis. I'm sure Simon would still be a top paying customer for that. Or maybe not. Things have changed. For this particular quarter, Peyton Manning is your top guy. Okay. If you wanted to have a pie view of that, it gives you right away Peyton Manning with that 41%. What else can I know? Who, which category am I having my most expenses in for this quarter? And at the same time, I can be looking at the expense charts by the fee book by category for the particular month. So it tells you right away that rent is your top expense, whereas divorce is your top paying category. So having this kind of insight, click of a button, really proves to show the amount of data that's in the system and the type of information that your own data is providing you. So if you want to know your work in progress for the particular month, you have right there. And for even we even tell you by how long, for how many days, and what percentage. What are your pro bono charts for the month? And you can compare it. So you can compare your pro bono charts for this month, and you can compare it to a date range in October. You could say from the 1st of October to the 31st. Tell me what my pro bono charts are. So you had a 2376 split. You had a 2871 split the previous month. Okay? So this is obviously a great improvement because you have no more billable hours the next month. So that's the kind of comparison that you want to give yourself and the insight that we give you right away. Maybe a pie chart gives you a better understanding between October and November. Okay. So going back to my presentation, everything that we spoke about today, going back to the agenda, not only ULOS insights and analytics capabilities provides you the, you know, the 360 view of your business, it basically gives you the power to ask the types of questions that you did not know to ask to begin with. It analyzes your three 
core silos of your practice, your contacts, your matters, and your accounting aspects of your business, both legal and business accounting, and gives you the insight around that data. And it provides all of this power at no additional cost as just being a part of your ULA subscription. So if you are a current user of ULA, we sincerely appreciate if you would go ahead and try out the analytics feature and give us your feedback. If you're new to ULA, uh, please visit us at ulawpractice.com and we do offer a free obligation 30-day trial. So with that, I'm going to open the floors for any questions that there may be. And just as a quick reminder, this is not a CPD session. It's not accredited for CPD. Um, we will be recording this whole session and we'll be sending it out to you as clients. Uh, again, this is to also highlight a particular feature with the new law and the capabilities that it provides you as a legal practitioner. So please feel free to use the chat window to ask any questions that you may have that I could take before we can close and uh, have a good weekend. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thank you very much for attending yet another ULA webinar, and we appreciate uh, your time. And please do check us out at uh, ulawpractice.com slash webinars for forthcoming webinars, and uh, we do have a CPD session later in November. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email support at ulawpractice.com. Thank you.